and welcome back to Fishing with Dan. Today I'm going to show you how I built my new camp kitchen or chuck box. This is it here. As you can see it's in open out format at the moment and I can't take any um, credit for the, the basic design of the thing. There are quite a few of these on the internet and I just copied that basic design and added a few of my own touches. Mostly to make it lightweight. Some of the ones I've seen are something like £100 or almost 50 kilos empty. Um, mine actually weighs um, about £37 or 17 kilos empty. And I made mine out of 6mm uh, plywood with some sort of uh, skeleton strips to, to hold it all together. It is still very robust, uh, but basically at my age I needed something which was lightweight and which wasn't going to break my back as I took it off the trailer. Here's a few photos of the unveiling of the, uh, the box, but if you also want to visit uh, one of my other videos, I did do one on the features of the, the box uh, in, in more detail. And I'll put a link in the description box below, just so you can watch that first if you want to. Okay, so the first thing you've got to do is hold your horses. And the reason I say that is because you need a plan. And to get a plan, you need to do some research. And what you do is you go onto YouTube, type in something like chuck box or camp kitchen or something like that, and just decide for yourself exactly what type of kitchen you want. I've personally made my choice, and this is the second thing you need to do. You need to do a drawing. Okay, it doesn't have to be a great drawing, and certainly mine isn't great, but if you don't have a drawing, you're just going to cost yourself a lot of time and effort, and it really is going to cost you more money, because you're going to cut things in the wrong way, you're going to need more wood, um, just more time and effort. So, as I say, hold your horses, take your time, do a plan. Now, of course, it's all very well just to go on to um, one of these ones on YouTube and say, I like that one, I'll build one of those. And that would probably work, except of course that all the stuff that you're going to put in your um, chuck box or camp kitchen isn't going to be the same as the guy that you've just chosen's video. Now in my case, I needed to get a two burner stove on the top. Mine's quite a wide two burner stove, so I measured it up and I decided that it's about this big and that was something like 750 milli millimeters required to give me the distance from left to right. Okay, so that was the first thing. The next thing I had to do was to get my washing up bowl, all my pots and pans and so on, into a lower compartment, so I made room for that. Then of course what you've got to do is decide, are you going to have drawers, are you just going to have storage slots, or are you going to have something in between, as I've done, which is to use these um, plastic containers. So these are the containers I've chosen. As you can see, got utensils in, I've got three of them, and I'm going to build shelves into the unit, just put those on the shelves, then I don't have to reach right down the back to try and get to anything, I can just pull them out. Now having said that, when I did the drawing, the front to rear dimensions, I decided were going to be 350 millimetres. And guess what? These, from there to there, are 370 millimetres. So, forethought and planning. My box is now going to be 380 millimetres from front to back to accommodate those. Like I said, four foot and planning. So let's assume you've done your drawing, as per this, and you're happy with what you're going to build. The next thing you have to do, of course, is to do a cutting plan. Now, if you go to the local DIY store, hardware store, you can probably go out and buy a 8 foot by 4 foot or 2.4 by 1.2 metre board. Now in my case, I'm going to make mine out of 6mm board, but what you still have to do is to create a cutting plan. Okay, and all the cutting plan is, is making the best use of the board. 
So you just take all the, the back and the sides and the top and all the rest of it, put it into the, uh, the cutting plan and hopefully you'll come up with very little uh, wastage. Don't do what I did. Think you've got it all done. Then go off and go to the local store, get the board cut up and I got mine cut down here and across here uh, to make it manageable to, uh, to bring it back in the, in the car. And then I gave myself a couple of days and I had a second thought and I changed things. So a word of advice, get everything sorted out in your head, do the plan and then wait a few days before you get anything cut. Anyway, I've managed to work around that and I do have my boards cut up now. I've cut the main carcass out of the, uh, the wood now and I've got the back, middle shelf, lower shelf, the left hand side and the right hand side and the slats to support the, the gas cooker. Now I'm not going to go any further than that just at the moment because, just in case I make any mistakes, and you do make mistakes when you do this kind of thing. So I've got all those down there and I think the next thing to do is let's start uh, just making sure they um, assemble together okay, I haven't made any mistakes and then we'll actually start doing the, um, the fitting together properly. So as you can see I've dry fitted the back and the sides um, and it looks pretty good um, obviously uh, not really too much to make a mistake of there but what some of you will have picked up on is that of course on these two scrap pieces of wood here trying to join two pieces of six millimeter or quarter inch plywood together really doesn't work you could try gluing it you could try pinning it but that doesn't work so for those of you that watched my uh, video on let me get back here that's better Right, those of you that watched my video on how to make a um, fishing tackle box or seat box, um, you'll have seen this method before. But basically, what we're going to do, obviously we use the 6mm plywood to give us uh, light weight. It's actually still quite strong, but of course, as I say, you can't uh, fit the edges together. So you cut off a few strips of this 9mm plywood, and what you do is put it on like that, and I'll just brad through the back of there and glue it and then when it's on you can put this one in as well like so and then you can brad and glue through that way and it, basically it becomes a skeleton and it really does form a very strong bond I uh, don't expect you to believe that just yet but when you see the end product I hope you will so now we've got to take these uh, pieces of wood which are the frame or the skeleton for the piece and we've got to attach them to the back. Now you have to remember of course that the back is going to sit in this gap here so to simulate that I'm just going to put a scrap piece of six millimeter plywood in and then I can just brad nail down having done some gluing on the inside of the thing. Let's give it a go. There we go, bit of glue. Make sure everything is up to the edge Push in, push down. And there we go. I'll just clean off the excess glue and that's that piece done. And then normally of course you would actually nail or screw from the thinner piece into the thicker piece. But because these nails are only there purely to hold the, the strip down while the uh, glue sets up, I'm not going to worry too much about that. So that's pretty much everything done for the top shelf as you can see. Now what I have to do is to get some more of these filleting pieces and put them in like so. And basically it's almost a repetition of the process above, but it is slightly different at the front. So I'll get these two in, and then when I get to the front I'll show you where the differences are. Oops, almost forgot to tell you. Obviously under here, this is where the shelf's going to go. So I'm just going to put this little piece in here to simulate the shelf. Because we're going to be putting that in uh, later on, but obviously I have to leave room for it when I do these filleting pieces now. So as I said then, I've done the, the back pieces, and obviously now I've got to the front. Now remember, this is going to be a front plate. That will go into there like so. So this time, rather than recessing it, I can bring these right out to the front here, and just staple them down and glue them. So the next thing we've got to do then is to do some assembly. I'm going to attach the sides to the back and then I'll work my way further down doing the shelves. 
So to attach the sides then, I put plenty of glue on. It could get a little bit messy, but I'd rather have too much glue than too little at this point. Just put it on, cut it together. Quick wipe just to make sure we are where we think we are. And a couple of brads just to hold the thing. There we go. And then we'll just push on down through there. And that's the first side on. So this first slat, I've glued the edge and the top. And this is going to be a bit fiddly, but if I put it in, just guide it up, and then bring it into line like that. Whoops. Make sure that your workpiece hasn't moved. There we go. Whoops. <laughs> Right, so we're in. Now I'll just put a couple of rads in under here and under here, and we can do the back slat. That's the support slats installed, so now I just need to fit the front plate. I've glued down the edges and across the top. We've got some glue running at the moment, but as I say, I'd rather have too much and too little at this point. And just get that into there, good fit. I will be putting a strap on this to pull it together, but uh, for the moment we can start just pinning down. Well that's as much as I can do for now, everything's all pinned together. And as you can see, I've put that ratchet strap across that uh, front piece there, just to pull everything nice and tight together and keep it nice and square while it dries. The top section is fairly dry now, so all I'm going to do is repeat the process again, put these side buttons in, on here and then I'll just do exactly what I did before take the shelf and pin it in and glue it and I'll be doing the same thing down here at the bottom uh, for the, the lower shelf so that's the glue all dry now then um, it's starting to take shape as I said I put the middle shelf on and the lower shelf and structurally I did it exactly the same way as previously uh, with these buttons or strips whatever you want to call them which form the skeleton of the, uh, the, the, the box. Um, I've still got to put some dividers in, um, which is going to be fun because they're just going to be glued in place here and here. Um, you'll also notice at the bottom here, I put this skirt on. And the reason for that is going to become obvious shortly, but it has to do with when I put the uh, adjustable legs on the side so I can keep everything nice and level. I think the next thing then is let's crack on with getting these uh, these dividers in and get those to dry and then we can build the the wings there's no science involved here folks I've put in the bits and pieces I want to put in this is in very roughly something about there and I'm just going to put a slight mark on to indicate where that's going to go and then I'm going to get a square and just draw a line out that way do a similar one up here and then I'm just going to glue to the line so as you can see then, we've got all the dividers in now and we've got all the items inside the box that we need to. Uh, it was a tighter fit than I expected and I should have given myself a little bit more space uh, into the sides here. Um, they do come out well, it's no real issue. I would just like to have maybe another sort of 10 millimeters of space, but that's the situation sometimes when you're building these things from scratch. While this is drying, I'll now crack on with the, the wings and then we can start attaching the wings to the box itself. I've cut the wood up to make the wings. I've done the tops, bottoms, sides and backs for both of them. And what I've done is I've made them 100 millimetres or 4 inches deep. And I could have just taken the edges and just butted them together and tried to pin and glue them. But you can end up with sort of issues where they're not totally straight or at 90 degrees. So what I've done, I've taken... A groove out of each piece and also at the end of the tops and bottoms so they fit on like that put these together 
They fit in, they're totally straight because they're butted up to each other and they're much stronger than the, the joint I showed you a second ago. Put them in, take the back, put that in, and I get this right. There we go. They all fit in absolutely correctly and absolutely squarely. So all I have to do now is to pin them together, glue them and leave them to dry overnight. So it's the following morning and the glue's all dry on the wings now and as you can see I've just um, fitted a shelf in here with these restraining bars. Uh, they aren't actually glued in yet, this is just a dry fit. I made them a tight fit so I could do exactly what you see here. If I touch them they'll probably fall over. Uh, but um, the idea of this is to get out all of the stuff that you're probably going to take with you when you go camping and you're going to use in your kitchen and start to decide what you're going to put where. As you can see in the bottom here I've got various uh, condiments and uh, oil and so on um, and in the top I'm proposing to put some glasses and some large tumblers, a couple of cups and so on but the reason for doing this is obvious. If you try to take this out and it doesn't clear the shelf, then there's no point in even trying to do it. Similarly up above, and this is where this shelf may well move, this is the tallest item here at the moment, there's two wine glasses together. If I put them in and they fit like that, that's going to work just fine. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to take a pencil and I'm going to mark the position of the rail which holds the stuff in and the shelf, transfer it across all the way and then I can glue and pin uh, everything in and then just wait for that to dry and then at that point we can start to put the wings onto the actual carcass. I bought two hinges. This one was originally joined together and it was something like 915 millimeters, or about three feet long. What it meant was by cutting it down in the way I've done as you see I can put one section of the hinge down here for the door and this other section is going to go up here and this is where the, the lift out flaps are going to go and that's just wide enough to do exactly what I want on there too. To fit the hinges I found the easiest way is to offer it up to the carcass, give yourself a little bit of space at this end, probably 25-30 millimetres or so, around about an inch, uh, and just fold it over like so. If I then take a drill and just drill the hole like so that's a one millimeter drill they come with little screws put them in now normally I'd be using the screwdriver I've just lost that screw bear with me I'll pick that up in a second normally I'd use the the battery operated screwdriver but because of the nature of these brass screws I'm going to use a handheld screwdriver because I have in the past twisted the heads off with the battery screwdriver and they're only small so they fit on quite neatly. I'm going to fit three of them on to start with And the reason I'm only fitting three is, first of all, three will hold the thing adequately for now, but they also mean that it's only three to take out, because I'm going to take this back off again fairly shortly, because this whole thing is going to be covered with Danish oil to make it waterproof and food safe. If I take the, the door, make sure I've got it the right way around, which is that way. Place it on so that the top edge is flush here. Offer it up to the, the hinge. This is where you have to be quite precise, make sure everything's nice and neatly aligned. There you go. And then I'm going to just put the same three screws in the top, and then we've got both doors on. And the moment of truth, make sure everything's fitted correctly. That's one wing, and the other wing. I'd have to say I'm fairly pleased so far. I just got to the point where I was uh, about to fit the, the top flaps and I realised that I've actually still got a bit more work to do. First of all, 
this here is only a six millimeter section so I've cut the usual frame or button I'll pin and glue that in and wait for it to dry then we've got something to put the screws for the hinge into while we're on the subject of the hinge I've had to cut it down a little bit because it was overlapping the, the door here so I'll put that on like that and then I'm going to put some little lips either side here and these will lock the doors in place well one mistake later I've realized that when I came to fit this lid onto the hinge it didn't matter which way I mounted the, the hinge I was going to have a problem let me show you in the end I've decided to do it this way and I've just put this little piece of wood on to simulate this one here so if it was sitting down in position like so that would be fine and then when I bring it back this way that also looks fine however when I try and lift the door around as you see the door is gonna gonna meet with it there so what I've got to do is is take the hinges off the the door and just drop them down by about 10 millimeters it probably is something I should have thought of before but you know you make these things for the first time and mistakes do happen so give me a few minutes we'll rectify that but it does give me an issue at the bottom because when I put the legs on um, it's gonna give me a lot less clearance to do that now however we'll approach that one and overcome it when we get there eh? well that wasn't too bad in the end um, as you can see I've got the lid fitted and before I open it up to show you how it works you can see I fitted this flap on the front and that prevents this door from coming open it's kind of a, an inbuilt locking mechanism now I may actually put a locking mechanism between the two doors at the end but we'll see how that goes anyway back to the, uh, the flap itself if I lift it up open out the door and as you can see it all fits rather nicely so I'm just going to put another flap on the back there to complement this one that'll help things uh, stop falling off as well so hopefully I'll just uh, spend another half an hour doing the other side and uh, we're getting very close then I've just finished fitting the outside edge flaps to the tops here as you can see um, I've taken the opportunity to round off all of these corners so I don't catch myself and obviously when I put this back down it acts as a lock on these two front doors in operation it's now working perfectly got a good solid base here for putting stuff on there when I'm cooking so I'm pretty much ready now to disassemble the whole um, kit and use some of this Danish oil on it uh, I know it's for interior use but it's a nice penetrating oil and I'm told it's food safe um, please feel free to check that for yourselves um, bearing in mind that my box isn't going to be outside in the elements uh, it's always going to be undercover uh, under a gazebo or some sort of annex or awning um, it may get a little bit of water here and there but I'm quite happy with the, the look of the, the Danish oil if you want it to be waterproof feel free to uh, use something like a, a varnish but uh, make sure it's food safe um, so really it's just a question now of me uh, disassembling and getting this Danish oil on it's a couple of days later and I've got two coats of Danish oil on the project and as you can see it's made it a nice uh, golden color which I really do like um, I've reassembled everything um, although a word of warning because these sides here are made of 9mm plywood the brass screws that came with the piano hinge did protrude through slightly into the, the edge here so I took a file and just filed them down by hand and they did make a few marks on here but as you can see or hopefully you can see the addition of another layer of uh, Danish oil just got rid of any marks and it looks as good as new before I put the legs on there's just one other thing I want to get out of the way and that's to put these handles on as you can see they lock in this position and it makes it very easy for me to uh, to grip the box and uh, carry it around now as far as positioning goes I'm just going to take an arbitrary position in the center line of the box but I'm not sure about the height yet I'll make a decision on that when I fit it um, it did come with some screws but of course you've got to bear in mind that this is six millimeter plywood so trying to screw into that wouldn't work so I'm actually going to use some bolts and I'm gonna put some washers on the inside to help with the structural support for the, the plywood I've measured the center point and bear in mind it's from here to here and not from here 
to here. So the center point for me is something like 235 millimeters from this edge. And then I've taken an 80 millimeter drop down from the top. It's purely arbitrary. It's just because I felt that that was a good place for it. Um, the main thing is to measure, as we say, from here to here and get the half distance point here. The last thing you want to do is to measure from here to here and then have the thing sort of tipping forward because of the weight of the doors. I've marked and drilled the holes for the handles, as you can see, and I'm going to use five millimeter bolts uh, with washers on the inside of the structure for support. And all I've got to do now is to actually insert these through the holes, bolt up and do the same on the other side. So the only thing left to do now is to make the legs. And to do that, I'm going to use this tubular aluminium. I've cut two pieces, which are 450 millimeters long. This is the uh, 1 16th or 1.6 millimeter uh, gauge. And be careful you don't get anything too thin because any thinner than this, and you're gonna have issues with this being wobbly or maybe even breaking altogether. I've used this stuff for years and I find that at uh, 1.6 millimeters, it works fine. If you want to go to two millimeters or even three, that's entirely up to you but I find this will do the job. Let me show you how I'm going to put it on. So here's the side of the, the chuck box with one of the extending wings here. I'm going to bolt this onto here like this and I'm going to have a leg coming up here and a leg coming up here and they'll be about um, 300 millimeters long and that'll give me an overall height of about 900 millimeters which is the height of a standard countertop. So, in terms of the, the legs themselves, I've got to draw some holes uh, down through here and I've also got to get a rivnut, which is a, a screw thread mechanism, into here. So I'll do that now and I'll come back once I've finished. So here's that piece of tube then with the holes drilled in it. As you can see, I've got two holes, one at each end, and those take the extending or telescopic legs. And I've got two others here and here. And these are to, uh, take support beams. Now, if I were to just try and put this on here and bolt it, that would give me an issue with stability because this is only, as I said before, six millimeter plywood. So what I'm going to do is to insert some more of this six, 16 millimeter tube through these holes, take it a few um, inches or um, say about 150 millimeters inside and then I'm gonna have it so that it's held up by a bracket. Um, probably doesn't make a great deal of sense at the moment, but it will when I show you how I'm gonna do it. Legs wise, I've got these. Uh, these are some fishing box legs I bought in England, but I will show you how to make your own legs. So you don't have to go to that expense. I'll put these in. I'm just using these um, knobs which I bought from um, Radio Spares or RS Online and this is a rivnut. This is a threaded insert which I've put in there and I've actually done a small separate video on that to show you how all this uh, gets put in because the problem is uh, it's not like an ordinary way of doing a rivnut. You have to do it from the inside. So the video is uh, five or six minutes long but at least then you'll know exactly what's going on. And then obviously this will fit onto here. Obviously they'll retract for when they're not in use and extend for when they are. I've positioned the rail along the bottom edge of the chuck box and I've clamped it down just for the moment with these two clamps. I've also drilled three 6mm holes through both walls of the uh, aluminium and I'm now going to extend that down through the wood and then I'll be bolting on with 6mm bolts. Before I bolted in permanently with these 6mm bolts what I need to do is to make sure I've drilled holes through here into the wood. So I'm going to mark it with a pen, a marker. Just put the thing in, go around a couple of times. Now I have to take off the, the rail so I can drill those holes. Now these are 16mm holes as you're probably well aware. Um, so the holes in the wood need to be at least 16 but I may well make them sort of 18mm because that's not going to provide any uh, support. All I'm going to do there is just allow the aluminium support piece to go through. I've made up these support pieces for the legs. Um, as you can see, it's just a couple of bits of scrap 
that's 16 millimeter tubing that's some of the the one inch square tube and they'll be going through in here like so and also they'll be attached to this plate here for support if you look over at this side here you can see this is the the thing actually in situ so these support beams go through the legs on both sides they're held on here and that keeps this from, from wobbling backwards and forwards now for the moment I've only loose fitted them and I'm going to take all of the metal work off now because I haven't yet put any of the uh, Danish oil on the uh, the base of this thing so I want to get that all on and these pieces glued in before I start to assemble the, the metal work and that's the two wooden supports now glued in here and here really there's not much else I can do today I've got to wait for that to dry when it does dry I'll take off all the metal work and I'll put uh, a couple of coats of um, Danish oil on there and after that I think it's really just a question of reassembly and building the legs and abracadabra as if by magic that's the two wooden supports in everything's had two coats of Danish oil and I've reassembled the the metal work there for the the legs so the only thing we've got to do now is to actually build the legs and that's it then complete so here's the finished leg components I've cut myself four 16 millimeter uh, tubular aluminium legs and I've cut those at 300 millimeters long which is about a foot these are going to be the side pieces which hold it on there's eight of those and I've got four feet now these are um, a plastic material and in fact it started life as you can probably see as a chopping board uh, very cheap sort of a couple of pounds a couple of dollars from uh, the local stores but cut it on the saw and I've made these at 90 millimeters square so that when I put these supports on like so it's going to just fit nicely so I suppose the only thing now then is uh, assemble one for you so for assembly then I've drilled a six millimeter hole in the leg and six millimeter holes in the sides of the supports but I've also done two four millimeter holes in the base of the thing and the idea of that of course is to hold the, the feet on assembly six millimeter bolt with a washer take one of the side pieces goes through take a leg push it through and do the same on the other side with a washer and I'm using these nylon locking nuts um, so they don't come undone in the UK they're called nylock nuts um, in other places in the world you'll probably find that they're called nylon locking nuts and I'll just tighten this one up and then we'll show you how to put the, the foot on so that's everything assembled then on there and uh, now we just have to place the pad on the bottom um, I'm just going to drill holes through the four millimeter supports and I'm going to use rivets to just hold the thing on do them one at a time I know I've just drilled through into my bench it's a sacrificial layer so I'm not too fussed about that but make sure you take the, uh, the rivet off the bench before you actually tighten it up that's the first one in that's the first leg complete as you see it can move forward and back to take account of any slope I'm just going to give it a little bit more tightening there so it doesn't flop around it's not too bad but just a fractional amount of tightening so we actually get to what we need and there we are four finished legs the last thing we've got to do is to fit them and then I can show you how this thing works so here it is then guys at the moment it's in its closed down form ready for transport as you can see it doesn't take up all that much room at all so now let's open the thing up for you and show you how it looks so first of all then we've got to drop the legs 
And to do that, if I lift up this lid here, just drop them down until they lock in position. And the same for the other side. So that's the legs down. If I open it up, that's what it looks like in its fully open state. Now you'll notice that this support beam down here protrudes forward of the leading edge of the box, and the reason for that is for stability. We could have just put the legs at the front and rear of the, the main box here, but I wanted a larger footprint, so that's why this is actually coming so far forward. You have to bear in mind that you could well be cooking on here, boiling water, all sorts of stuff, so the last thing you want is something which is uh, not stable. So on the subject of stability, let's assume we've got uneven ground, and to simulate that, as you see down here, I've put this brick down, and the whole thing is now leaning backwards. Of course, as I said before, if you're boiling water, that's the last thing you want. So all you do is go down to the leg, release, allow it to go forward, and we're now back where we were with a good solid platform. At the top here, we've got the gas stove. As I said originally, we've got uh, two burners in here, and basically I've recessed it so it's a little bit below the lip of the, the box itself. The reason for that being I'm trying to shield the burners from a little bit of the wind. Whether that works or not remains to be seen because I haven't actually used it yet when I've been camping. I have tested it in the garden here, boiled some water, and it, it does to a certain extent help. Uh, for those of you who have any concerns at all over safety with it being inside the box, I believe I've left enough room around it so that the, the box itself isn't going to get too heavy, uh, too um, hot. The thing with that is, of course, if you've got any concerns whatsoever, all you need to do is just make a, a raised plinth so you can sit it on like this sort of thing when you're using it. I'll leave that one down to you. Um, personally, when I boiled some water on it, I did actually put my hands along here and at the back, and I could keep my hands on the wood without burning them at all. So I'm quite happy that it stays like this, but if you have any concerns whatsoever, please feel free to make yourself a raised plinth to just get the, the gas stove up above the height of the wooden sides. Okay, we've got the two side flaps. Of course, they're used to put plates and uh, other stuff on for when you're cooking. Um, very handy to have these lips so they don't fall off. Um, hopefully, that'll give us enough space to, to put everything on when we're cooking. Again, haven't been out with it yet, so time will tell. You've got everything you'd normally expect uh, from uh, knives and forks and spoons, utensils, uh, bowl, saucepans and so on. But what I've tried to do here is to have everything in these large plastic boxes. What I didn't want to do was to have to reach down and try and get under here because the aged back isn't what it was. And so these actually work very well. Uh, obviously it's personal preference, whatever you use in there, but this is for me. In the sides, as you'd expect, we've got stuff that uh, is just bits and pieces really. Things like uh, tea, coffee, sugar, um, kitchen towels, cleaning equipment. On this side, we've got condiments, cups, and, and so on and so forth. Exactly as you'd expect. But really, um, it's down to you guys. If you want to change it, that's entirely fine. So that's it really, folks. Um, took me a little while to do this. Um, I did take my time and kept coming back for a couple of hours here and there, but it wasn't a, a really difficult project to, to do. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, you know the score. Click the like button. If you want to subscribe, you can do that too. But anyway, until the next time, bye for now.